Hey guys, it's Logan Freeman with Live Free Investments. Joining me is Parker Webb. Hey Parker, guys, how, are we? how are we doing today, man? Doing well. Okay, we're going to address the elephant in the room about coronavirus outbreak and the uh, implications for real estate. We've had a lot of our investors give us calls, voice some concern, and we want to address a couple things in this video. One is just talking through how we're thinking about how coronavirus is going to impact our current deals that we are managing, our deals that we're going after, and how we're thinking about our strategy and if, if it's going to impact that. And the way that I'm going to start this off is just going through a special report that has been put out by Marcus and Millichap. And so the title of it is The Interest Rates Hit All-Time Lows as the Spread of Coronavirus Sparks Flight to Safety, Stability and Yield of Real Estate Reiterated by the Stock Market Volatility. Parker, why don't you just give us your high-level opinion of uh, coronavirus, how it's going to impact commercial real estate, and we'll dive into some specifics. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's there's two pieces to to look at this at a report. I think there's kind of the, what is the short term impact and what is the long term impact. Yeah. Um, so I think you know short term people are seeing that you know real estate has been incredibly stable through this whole panic. Right? I mean, when your stock markets you know drop into the floor and circuit breakers are being triggered, you know, on the trading floor, uh, your real estate portfolio isn't going down at all. Uh, and, you know, even the REITs, their stock price is going down, but the value of the underlying assets is the same. That's right. Uh, so I think, you know, people are realizing that the, you know, the ability to have cash flow in real estate as a part of their portfolio helps to mitigate some of that risk. Um, and so I think additionally, you know, when you think about what are the short-term effects of coronavirus, well, immediately the debt is cheap right now. I mean, it's yeah. incredibly cheap. And I think that provides us in the real estate space a huge benefit because we are long-term investors, right? And so we're going to go in and secure cheap debt and buy properties that we're going to hold for five, seven, 10 plus years. Um, and, you know, we're going to have great uh, loan terms well past the time that the coronavirus is making. That's right. Uh, you know, short term, uh, I think that there's going to be, you know, some impact if there's some social distancing happening. I think that that's going to potentially affect some retail sales. It might affect, uh, you know, some office tenants. They might start to think about, their leases, but ultimately long-term, I mean, it's, it's not going to impact it, right? I mean, people are going to do what they do. They're going to freak out over the next 30 to 60 days, and then we're going to go back to business as usual. What are humans, our very nature is we are social animals. That's right. right? So the idea that we're going to have social distancing for any you know, significant length of time, uh, I think is absurd. You know, we'll, we'll do what we need to do until a medical intervention happens that helps to mitigate the effects of the coronavirus, and then we'll be back to business as usual. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when we think about how this is going to impact, let's just say, our current holdings that we've got, right? So we've getting some, in, you know, some investors giving us a call. You know, we've got three or four active raises going on for, for real estate. Parker and I are very confident in the real estate that we have under contract that we're going to continue to execute on. But should people be worried about um, their multifamily or retail properties that they might be holding right now? What do we think about from a, you know, from a, from an occupancy standpoint, and if there's going to be any impact on that whatsoever. So I, I think that, you know, if you're buying good real estate, occupied cash flowing real estate uh, in, the, in the commercial space specifically, uh, I, I don't think you're going to see a substantial impact. Right. And I think the effect that's going to happen over 30 to 90 days is not going to make a, a super substantial impact to the retailers that you might already have in place or the office businesses that you have in place in, in a commercial uh, office property. Um, so I, I just don't think it is. If I was delivering a brand new property right now, I would, I would be concerned, sure. uh, you know, concerned that we're going to be able to get the leases, that people are going to open their stores on time, et cetera. Um, but you know, frankly, if you're buying good cash flowing real estate, I mean, as an example, Logan, one of our deals, uh, as we were just talking about as a tenant that's been there for 25 years, you right. know, it's a national credit tenant that has endured, you know, 08, 09, endured, you know, the 2001 recession, et cetera. Sure. Um, they've, they've done fine. They figured it out. And they've continued to, you know, to iterate their process to be better and, and more enduring. Um, on the multifamily side, I think it's interesting to think about it from like a management perspective. If you right. have, you know, COVID-19 happen in, in one of your properties, how are you going to deal what with are you that? Do? To What's your tenants? contingency plan? Right, right. So I think that's what we've been in the process of doing is talking through internally how we're going to manage that. If that happens, how we quarantine our employees to keep them safe and still manage the properties effectively. And so I think you have to have that contingency plan. You have to act on it, you know, quickly. 
Um, you know, but at the end of the day, I think here's a deal. You wash your hands and That's right. you know, don't shake too many hands. You know, we can you know, bump elbows or something like that. Um, but I think it's just about being smart and doing the things that you, you have to do. That, frankly, we should have been doing all along. Sure. So historically, pandemic outbreaks such as SARS or the H1N1 swine flu and the bird flu generated the short-term market instability that we're seeing right now. And that obviously moved towards stabilization over the following three to six months. So the, what we have under contract right now is supposed to close in the next two to three months, right? I mean, so we have, you know, and this is, this is stemming from the fact that I've had multiple people call me and say, hey, you should use this to retrade your properties that you had under contract. Well, one, I don't know how a sophisticated real estate owner is going to look at that and say, this is a reason for us to retrade the price. The value is going to be the same. Uh, so I'd like to hear your, your, your thoughts on that. But then two, you know, in three to six months, we legitimately may not be talking about this and our properties really aren't, you know, the ones that we have under contract right now are not closing for the next three months per se. And so, uh, you know, from a, from when we're talking to our investors, how, how, do we, how do we work them through that thought process? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think the effect is going to be short-term. I think we just keep thinking about what the long-term impact of this is, right? And right. I think, you know, as an example, like when we have the, the properties we're currently under contract on, we were underwriting four and a quarter, 4.5% interest rates. That's we right. just got to close it for 3.15. Um, you know, and so the same deal that we were interested in buying uh, you know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, we're so interested in buying and debt is 110 bips cheaper than it was, right? And so what's great about that is you're not seeing asset prices appreciating in the short term period, right? So because there's enough panic and people are still kind of holding on to their cash, you haven't seen a bunch of cash windfalls happen in the, the real estate space in the last you know, few days. And not to mention real estate takes a longer time to respond to changes in price than does the public market. Yes. And so we have the same, the same price of assets that we had before, but our cost of capital is cheaper. Right. Now, do you go back and renegotiate? I mean, I, I think it depends on what your deal is. I think, frankly, what we're talking about and the deals we're looking at are, are deals that it just doesn't make sense. We're dealing with sophisticated owners. And uh, if you go try to retrade on them for this reason, I think they just say, I'll hold the asset and I'll go refinance it with these great. Sure. Returns. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, keeping, keeping the thought that real estate is obviously a long-term investment. It's less volatile than other investment options that you're seeing in the equities markets. Although there's uncertainty in the market today, real estate investors, we just have to keep our eyes on the long-term horizon, right? I mean, that's, that's the whole narrative. That's the whole sentiment here. And if you dive in to the real players and hitters past what you're seeing in the news, you'll see guys like Russ Gray with the real estate guys. You'll say, they're saying this too shall pass. And they're not downplaying playing the fact that people are dying. Okay, I'm not doing that. What I'm, what I'm saying is from a capitalist standpoint, this too shall pass. Now, what opportunities are there there, right? And I think the opportunity, like you said, is locking in rates at 3.15% like we did yesterday or like we're doing today on a long-term deal, right, for a retail property. I mean, that's incredible. Uh, but, but secondly is, is the fact that these guys with Blackstone, these guys that are holding 200 to 400 billion in assets are uh, looking at this saying, okay, well, our cap rates are not going to be compressed in the next 30 to 60 days. And debt is really low. They are going and buying right now. And so uh, I want people to know that, you know, you can't just look at the news headlines and say, oh my gosh, what are we doing? We're going to sit on all of our cash. When there's blood in the streets, per se, it's time for the real people that understand the economy, the financial system that's backing our economy, and the different levers that are pulling each everybody in, in the different directions to that creates this opportunity. I don't know how long this is going to last. Nobody does. But what we are taking in, into consideration is the facts that we have today. And the facts are, is we're going to be in real estate for the next 50 years or however long we're alive right now. The rates are lower, the cap rates are not being compressed, and there's an opportunity to deploy capital into good long-term assets. Right. And if I had to give maybe three quick summaries of what I think people should do, right? It's one, trust the institutions that we have. WHO right. is working on this. The CDC is working on this. Our hospitals and our doctors and nurses across the country are working diligently to solve this problem. 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, two, it's do all the common sense things you have to do. It's, it's you know, wash your hands, it's take care of yourself, it's don't go out in public if you're feeling sick, et cetera, et cetera, right? right? And if it's number three, as far as the market goes, what should you do? Buy the dip. You know, the market is cheap, uh, debt is cheap, now's the time to buy. That's a great summary. The U.S. economy is well positioned to withstand the coronavirus induced shock that we're feeling right now with our sturdy job creation, and our growth drivers. So, uh, guys, that's it for Parker and me. Uh, if you want to talk about this more in detail or track the resources that we are utilizing, like this report that we're talking about, like these other folks that are really diving into this, ITR Economics has a great podcast on this Black Swan event. We'd be happy to talk you through that. In the meantime, we are not going to stop underwriting. We're not going to stop reviewing and raising capital and doing real estate transactions. So uh, if you guys want to chat more about this, just let Parker and myself know. Thank you, Parker. Absolutely. Thanks, Logan.